Hi guys, today I want to talk a bit about Face Motion 2D because I used it for all my short films for the face expressions and it worked quite well. And the cool thing is you also have a Blender plugin for it and with that you can easily transfer your face motions directly to your character and you can also transfer the audio directly and this is super useful if you can see everything in real time and record it directly in Blender. But there are two things you have to know. The first thing is it only works with iPhones or some iPads because it uses Apple's AR kit. And the second thing is the base version is free, but the record time and streaming time is limited to five seconds. And yeah, for most cases, this is just too short. And because of that, you would have to do some in-app purchases. Uh, one is to unlock the record time and one is to unlock the streaming time. And both cost about $20. And um, yeah, you only have to do this one time. And you can also say you only want to unlock the record time, for example, if you want to transfer the files manually. So you would have to pay only $20. And yeah, for both, you would have to pay $40. If you want, you can also subscribe just for a month to unlock the streaming or record uh, limit, but this would cost you $5 for each of it. And yeah, I think in most cases it makes more sense to buy a permanent license here. So yeah, it's not completely free for most cases, but I think it's really worth the money. I already tried many apps and this really works the best for me especially with the direct blender transfer where you could even transfer the audio directly it can be really a time saver but it's something you have to know because if you look at the app store reviews then you will see that most users just didn't know that they have to do in-app purchases for that first of all you can download the blender plugin for free under downloads and blender plugin and then just install it like any other plugin if you go into the app the first time, then you can directly see your face motions. And here you also have some controllers. So with the left slider, you could put your left or right eyebrow higher. Or you could look more sad or more angry. <laughs> okay, um, but keep in mind these settings won't affect the final export. So they are only for the preview. And then under select, you could choose another character if you want, like this one or this one. And yeah, normally I will go with the first one. And under reset, uh, you could reset your face position. So for example, if I uh, change the location of the iPhone or if I yeah, look in another direction, then I could reset it here uh, like this. And then on the settings, um, here you have the ability to unlock the record, uh, the recording time limit um, on the purchases and also the streaming time limit. Yeah, and here you would first have to choose your software, in this case, Blender. And then uh, what's the most important for us and um, for the Blender add-on later, uh, the iPhone's IP address. Um, yeah, but first we go back again. And then if you want to record something directly with the iPhone without the Blender app, then you can just click on record here. And then hello, hello, hello. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, and then you can save it as a FBX file. And here you can also play it. And then, hello, hello, hello. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. What's also important to know, the uh, head rotation won't be recorded. So the AR kit shape keys are always um, only for the face part. And now the cool thing comes, um, first of all, make sure that your character's face has all the uh, AirKit shape keys. 
We did that in an earlier video where I face it. And then the most important thing is the IP address of your phone. So I showed you before how you can see it. Um, it's just under the settings of the face motion app. And then if you typed here the right number, and if you have your face motion app open, you can just click on stream live. And here, as you can see, we already can see our motions. Um, but it's a little bit too slow um, in the material preview. Um, so for that, we mostly have to go to the solid uh, view. And here it looks already better. Um, and then you could also set your playback to frame dropping so that you can see your uh, motions in real time. Yeah, okay. Okay, now we come to the bake recorded settings here. Um, and here you can tick if you want to receive audio. Um, I will tick it for now. And then here, yeah, you can uh, set your folder where you want to save it. Um, in my case, I put it in the downloads folder for now. And then you can also say, uh, how the audio file name should be uh, called and yeah then you can say if it should um, start baking at frame zero or later and then under the settings for recording um yeah you have to take bake after the end of recording um yeah and you can also take if you want uh, stream at the start of recording so if you disconnect the stream then yeah and if you then click on start recording also the stream uh, will be started automatically and then here you can um, check if it uh, should apply these shape key values for all shape keys in the scene and yeah we leave that ticked and then we just click on uh, start recording. Hello, this is a test. Mm, mm, mm. Okay. And then uh, after you stop the recording, it immediately bakes the data. And then you can just preview it in Blender directly. So I go to the first frame. And if I click on the face, as you can see, it automatically uh, keyframed all shape keys now and so I can just uh, play the animation hello this is a test okay and it's directly with uh, the sound and um, because um, if I go here to the um, video editing then as you can see it uh, yeah, automatically inserted the sound file here. And that's basically all you need to know. Um, what I would always recommend is do always some kind of overacting. So open your mouth a bit more, make your face expressions more extreme. Because um, if you look at a real face, then it has all a kind of small expressions and yeah, small muscles which uh, moves them and in the animation you're always limited by the shape keys and also what the face ID sensor can put out but yeah with a bit of exercise you can get pretty nice results but one big downside for me at the moment is if you have more than one character in a scene uh, which has the AR key shape keys and then it automatically keyframes all shape keys from all characters. Um, so you basically have then all character faces um, animated. And then you would have to delete the keyframes from the other characters afterwards. And yeah, this can be very annoying. So I hope this will be fixed in some way that, for example, only the ticked uh, character will be keyframed or yeah, something like this. Because at the moment you can only tick find all shape keys in a scene 
and then it animates every character or it finds uh, nothing. So if you untick it, it just keyframes nothing. So I hope you liked the video and if so, please leave a thumbs up or comment below and then I see you next time.